If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner and welcome to Ask the Doctor. It's great to be with you today. This is our 16th season and as you know this program was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. It's more important than ever to become an informed patient and we're here to bring you timely health discussions. For those who are new to the show, there are two ways to get your questions in. First, by calling the live phone line at 718-499-6101. And second, you can email your questions to askthedoctor at netny.net, and we'll bring them into discussion. Now, for this episode, we have Dr. Smruti Mohanty, Chief of Gastroenterology at the New York Methodist Hospital. Next to him, we have Dr. Igor Mamkin, cardiology attending at the New York Methodist Hospital. And we also have Dr. Montgomery Douglas, who is the chairman of the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the New York Medical College. Welcome to all of you. Thank it's you. been a great week this week. Uh, I have a great panel here today. See some new faces, so we, we don't know what to expect, but it should be a lot, of, uh, a lot of excitement here today, so you want to stay tuned. Don't go far from the TV. The news, we're going to try and get through that quickly so we can get to your calls. In the news this week, there was an interesting story about pain tolerance and who can tolerate pain better. And I don't know, what would you guys guess? Who's going to, men or women, tolerate pain better? Um, I, I would say women. Women, that, and most people said women? I'd probably agree with that. But if I had the buzzer, it's not the yeah. right answer. I thought it would be men. <laughs> it's men. Really? Men are tolerating the pain better than women, which is important to know Then, when you're treating women with pain, you don't do it the same as you treat men. They may need more pain medication. Also, redheads were more sensitive to pain, so I don't want to say anything you know, why I get my pain. But, but anyway, so you've got to remember that men, and it may, we're not sure the reason. Now, women may be hormone-related. It may be gene, in the genes. Um, or it just may be in the psychology of it. Because men are supposed to be macho and not feel pain. And it may be that it's, um, the men are able to resist pain, get less pain, because of a psychological mindset. So we're not sure, but it's something that's interesting. And if wives are getting more pain than the men, there's a reason for it. So, Anyway, the other thing was uh, another story, Alzheimer's disease. And we're constantly looking for ways to prevent Alzheimer's disease. I mean, it's a dreaded disease. People, almost everyone's touched with somebody in the family or a friend who has it. And it turns out that those people who are doing crossword puzzles, who are reading, who are keeping their mind active during their, their 30s and 40s and 50s are not getting as the buildup of, of amyloid or this abnormal protein that builds up in patients with Alzheimer's disease and messes up the circuitry. So the, the, this buildup doesn't occur in people who are keeping their mind fit. So it's another reason to keep your mind fit, watch, ask the doctor, and we'll give you plenty of quizzes and keep your mind going, but read. Learn another language if you have to. Go to adult education. Don't stop learning, and you may be able to ward off Alzheimer's disease. There's uh, another story. It was interesting for men who have prostate enlargement. And it turns out one of the pills, Abidot, that is used to treat this, and me men who are on this would know who have a big prostate, they had less progression towards cancer. It seemed to have a therapeutic effect. And it also helped men who had early stage prostate cancer that were just being watched. If you put these men on Abidot, there was a significant percentage, an improvement in not going on to developing cancer or not having their cancer progress. So it's something men should be asking their doctors, who, anybody who's got early stage prostate disease, based on this study, should be talking to the doctors about possible options with this medication, Avidot. Now, uh, new cancer vaccine discovered, uh, just got FDA approval today up in Roswell Park in Buffalo, and it's, it's amazing. They had uh, actually one woman who had ovarian cancer with only maybe a couple of months to live, is actually alive seven years later with no sign of the disease. And basically, they're teaching the body's immune system to fight off the cancer. The cancer occurs because the body's immune system, or the, the protective mechanism, gets let down, and the cancer cells can proliferate. By teaching these cells to, to perk up and to remember what the cancer cells are, they stick around in the body. Not only can you, you get rid of the cancer that's there, but you have these uh, surveillance or, peop or these cells that are out there looking for signs of recurrence of cancer and is preventing it. So 
They're starting the trials now. It's being done in a hospital, which is too. It's not being done in the lab on mice or anything. It's being done in human beings in a hospital. And if you want further information, it's at Roswell Park in, Bo in uh, Buffalo. And they are, I think they are recruiting patients. So now is a good time to call them if you want. And call us after the show. We'll get you the number if you need that. I see Monsignor Bennett is there. Who um, Monsignor's missed only one show out of, out of all the 16 seasons. Monsignor, thanks for coming. And we have a, a different format for the quiz this time. As we lead up to Easter, we're trying to get e uh, religious-related uh, quizzes. I know Monsignor knows we talked about it. He knows this particular quiz, but let me lead into the quiz. So get your pencils and papers ready for this. And this is, this is the question. Easter, you know, it's not like Christmas. December 25th, it falls on a Thursday or Friday or Monday or whatever. Why is it that Easter, Easter it ch it changes the day? It's not the 25th. It's not a set date. But it, it varies from year to year, and it's the only uh, Catholic holiday, major Catholic holiday, whose date is determined by the lunar calendar. So the question is, why is the date of uh, Easter determined by the lunar cal calendar, and it, why does it occur on that day? What's the um, mechanism to determine what the day is of Easter? Okay? Now the number to call is 718-499-6101, and tonight's topics are gastroenterology, cardiology, and family medicine. Now remember, you can also email your questions to askthedoctor at netny.net. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on NET. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are gastroenterology, cardiology, and family medicine. And before we meet the doctors, I just want to uh, give a little shout out to some loyal listeners of, of the show, loyal viewers. Uh, Sydney, Barbara, and Dee, and they're from Saks Fifth Avenue. It's a great. Anybody been in, uh, been in that store lately? No. Really a great store. They're in the jewelry department, and they're always very helpful. They love the show. I know they're watching tonight. Some from the computer, some from the sets. So I want to welcome them aboard and tell what a great place it is to, to shop at Saks, and um, particularly the jewelry department. So I don't know if this gets me a ten percent discount, <laughs> but it, it would be nice. It would be nice. So thank you guys. Now a, a special young man, Bradley Bubel. He's, a, he's one of our youngest viewers, watches the show every week, got into Regis High School, which is a big deal. It's, it's full tuition for high school. It's one of the top Catholic schools in the country, and very few get in. So we want to congratulate Bradley on that, and we know he's going to be uh, you know, great um, for the school and wish him well. Joe Stiles, one of our loyal listeners, has, the pneumonia, has some kind of medical problem for HIPAA violation. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but he's under the weather. And uh, we want to wish him well. He's a loyal listener and um, good friend of the show. Okay, let's, uh, let's meet our guests here quickly, okay? Dr. Mahanty, it's nice to have you on board. Thank you. Doctor, we've been going over smiling. Dr. Mahanty's practicing that smile. It's a good smile. It's over there. But um, tell us a bit, little bit about yourself. What do you do? Um, I'm a gastroenterologist. Uh, um, my area of interest, not only general gastroenterology, and also liver disease uh -huh. and liver transplantation. With liver transplantation? Liver yes. transplants is a big deal. So what, yes. how do you factor in there? Patients, um, those who have um, serious liver problem or cirrhosis of liver mm -hmm. or liver failure, they need to be evaluated for a liver transplant. And that S so anybody out there who might have liver failure, and it's not that far-fetched, Tylenol I know we know is a yep. big cause of this. Still Tylenol is the number one cause of liver failure. So this is something that may touch someone, your patients in your life. So if you're in this area, Dr. Mahanty is a good guy to know because he, you get them. I guess there's a list though for the liver transplant. Yes. Um, so generally uh, there is a non-profit organization with charge of how to manage or listing for a liver transplantation. So there is a specific criteria uh, we use so that we can be biased. And so once you're evaluated based on your, um, how severe is the so liver So if I have more money or I'm a celebrity, no, do I move down? you can never get that. Okay. So Good. based on your disease process, how sick you are, then you can get in the list, not by the money. 
So gastroenterologists, they do live, you do not only liver, but the gallbladder, and people with diarrhea, constipation, Correct. irritable bowel, Crohn's disease, all, so many questions you can ask Dr. Mahanty. So you have a great opportunity. And your wife, I know she works in Stony Brook, I heard. She, um, she's a faculty at uh, Stony Brook. What's, uh, what's her name? We can give her a shot. Um, her name is Upper Look at these, couldn't remember the name <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. At CJ, you may have some GI problems later tonight. That's, uh, she's <laughs> yeah. basically my counselor. Yes. <laughs> she's a um, uh, psychologist by training her research at a neuroscience research. Excellent. Where did you two meet? Um, actually, uh, we met in uh, India. And, and actually, it's, it's interesting through my sister. Okay, so that she thought she would be good for you and introduce uh, you? Yeah, what's a long story. She initially agreed, then decided not to marry <laughs> me, so I postponed, then in later on went wow. back. I was here, she was there. So, um, But in any, any case, we finally got married. Uh, Great to so have you on the show, though. So and thanks thank for being you. here. We'll get a lot of questions for you. Dr. Mahanty, now, we have, um, what do you brought this model here? What do we have here? Um, yeah, so uh, this is a, a heart model. Um, and uh, uh, up front, you also see uh, vessels that uh, uh, show uh, atherosclerotic disease of the heart, so a buildup of plaque. For an example, um, if you look at this vessel, that's a healthy vessel. That's what uh, Could you vessels. Could turn that on the side? So sure. Yeah, look at, look at that. That's what vessels uh, look like. Now, with time, there's a buildup of plaque in the uh, vessels of the heart or fat, and the uh, arteries start looking like that. Now, and that progresses even further, and eventually the plaque oh looks something like that, okay? And that's when people start developing uh, symptoms such as shortness of breath, uh, chest pain, and so forth. So now you're a cardiologist. Yes. What, what do you do? Like, what, would, what kind of patients did you have today? Right, so um, I specialize in various uh, cardiovas diagnosis and treatment of uh, cardiovascular diseases, and that includes um, valvular diseases, atherosclerotic diseases, um, um, various arrhythmias, and uh, patients present with various uh, uh, complaints. And these include palpitations, chest pain, shortness of breath, um, and we diagnose them all. So you do a wide variety. Do you do the angiograms? Uh, we do do angiograms. I personally don't implant stents, but I do do an angiograms. Very good. And how, is that pretty much safe now? I know a lot of people going are nervous that they're right. going to have problems. How, it's a very common uh, uh, misconce misconception that angiograms are not safe. In reality, angiograms are very common. Uh, any bus busy hospital, such as Methodist Hospital, does about 15 to 20 uh, uh, coronary angiograms or uh, catheterizations, what we know in them as. In a day? In a day. Wow. And uh, the lot. risks That's of right. complications are really minimal. Excellent. Uh, but of course, rarely with, like with any surgical procedure, there's a risk of uh, complications. But that's negligible. And you live in Brooklyn now? I live in Queens, actually. Oh. I lived in Brooklyn for over 15 years. And then um, when we got married uh, a few years ago, we moved to Queens. Where and we have the best restaurant in common, right? That's Our favorite it. restaurant, yeah. the River yeah. Cafe. River Cafe. We go there, that's me and my wife, we go there every, uh, every year for our anniversary. That's great. And you have a child, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Peter, he's yeah. seven months. Wow. And um, he's a healthy boy, and That's we're very right. happy. Fantastic. And we're, we're really happy to have you here tonight. I know you're going to get a lot of calls. So thanks very much for giving of your time. Great. We appreciate Thank it. You. And Dr. Douglas, no stranger to the show. Probably eight times, ten times, Monty? Yeah, about a dozen times. Yeah. yeah. He's up in Valhalla now as chairman of the Department of Family Medicine, Community Medicine. Mm -hmm. What kind of um, the community medicine part? What is that? I know what family medicine is. What about community yes, medicine? Yes, community medicine is like the cross between public health and care of the individual patient. So you have a patient in front of you uh, at the bedside in the hospital, that's the individual patient. You're taking care of an overall community, like a city, a town, uh, that's public health. Where the two of them cross, that's community medicine. Uh -huh. So care of what, take care of the patient, but taking care of the community as well. Because how can we improve the health of the community if we only focus on the individual patient? Good stuff. Good stuff. Yes. And what about you? Any, any interesting trips or anything unusual? Um, uh, a trip. I made a trip to Dominica. Where the I'm church. We, the saga of the church. That's right. That's right. Where My, for those who know, it was destroyed in a hurricane. In, in an earthquake. Earthquake. I knew it was one of those natural yeah. disasters. But anyway, <laughs> um, and, and yeah, we've been, we've been actually. Yeah, go ahead. We've been talking about it on this show. Many people have sent in donations. And um, I think it's beginning to the foundation is, is exactly the exactly they they started digging the foundation and um, this is a, this is a church where my whole family 
you know, we all christened, you know, family of 16. We all yeah. made, we all had One of 16 baptized. children, Dr. Douglas. Yes, I'm number 15 out of 16. Yeah. And uh, we all baptized there. We all made First Communion there. We all confirmed there. And about, a, about four of us, including your sister myself. Is an, your sister was a nun. Was a nun, exactly. Yes. She had all three vows there, you know. And um, after it fell in the earthquake in 2004, Nothing happened as far as getting it fixed. Well, it's mm. a big church. So we formed a nonprofit here. It's called the New York Ports of Roman Catholic Church Rebuilding Initiative and started to raise funds here and got them to, to send them to the island. And they're actually getting started yeah. now. And Monty's family actually was the ruling, pretty much the ruling family, right, of Dominica? Well, we have, um, it's a family that um, has been involved in politics, and my brother was Very the Prime Minister. Very impressive family. Your brother yeah. was the Prime Minister. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Great to have you back. I see we got the lines of beep in here, so let's, let's see who we have on line one. Hello? It's Patrick. Patrick, nice to hear from you. Nice to hear from you. I thought maybe a little while I was going to be on next week's show. <laughs> <laughs> what? I know I got carried away with the guests. I'm too interested in the guests. You're right. Uh, how you been, Dr. Garner? We're doing well. How about you? How's your family? And everybody's good. My nephew's got the, well, actually, he uh, got a bacteria in his body. Oh. Um, and, yeah, so, uh, you know, it don't sound too good. I just, and then he has, a, he has a urinary tract infection. He's pretty sick, Doc. Oh, I just, uh, this is uh, what do you know about that? Is there any, uh, Patrick's uh, uh, cousin it was, was involved in a bad accident and as a result can't walk and is confined to bed pretty much. And now he's getting one of the problems that people get with that, with infections that set in in the body. That's tough. Is he in the hospital, Patrick? No, no, he's not. Doc, he's not confined to a bed. He's, so he goes to therapy. He actually drives now. Really? So he's made tremendous strides. Tremendous strides, you know. That's uh, great. But it's just, you know, the, the, apparently the the antibiotics are not working. Oh. You know, so. Um, Anybody have any thoughts on that, Monty? You want to have any thoughts on this? His, his antibiotics are not working for his urinary tract, and it sounds like he's got it in the bloodstream. Really, that um, that sounds like um, it needs to be changed. You know that sometimes, especially if he's had urine infection before, sometimes it can be resistant to that particular antibiotic. So you know you would probably need a urine test to be done to see what germ is growing there and what type of antibiotic should be. He should be on, but um, I would call his doctor and, and maybe get a change of antibiotic. That's yeah, what well, he, he, he did. He did that already. They're, you know, they're beyond that now. So yeah, we we'll we'll, we put, we'll pray for him and wish him well. That's a you know, that's a tough one. I know. Tough one. Uh, what how, how about that quiz? What's the quiz question? That's a about? tough quiz. I thought. Yeah. How come Easter is the only major holiday that's determined by the lunar calendar, the moon calendar? Well, the others, Christmas falls on a certain day, the twenty fifth. But Easter can, you know, Easter can spread out from all the way from March to the end of April, to April 25th. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, Why is that? I don't know. I That's don't the know. quiz. That's the quiz. It's a tough quiz. Uh, I, I ain't winning that quiz, Doc. But anyway, Patrick, so be well. We'll hear from you soon, I hope. Doc, I want to say hello to uh, Big Vinny on 6th Avenue. He, uh, he heard his uh, self-lifting weights today. Oh, Vinny, feel better. Thanks, Doc. Take care. We're going to go to Joe Stiles now, I think. Hi, Joe. Yes. Joe, I heard you're under the weather. All right, not bad. But, you know, I don't feel good because I got that phlegm all week. You know, I just want to make a comment. I've been in this field for 65 years. You make a great image on this show, and you reach out to the community and pay them back. I think it's outstanding. I have Dr. Zale Caliber on with you every Tuesday night. Continue the good work. God bless and very healthy. Happy to very blessed New Year to you and yours. Joe, thanks a lot. We've got so many calls. Let's go right to, uh, to Sally. Hi, Sally. Hi, Sally. Hello? Sally, hi. Turn off the TV because you got a little feedback there. Yeah, hi, hi. I have a gastroparesis from diabetes, and I also have colonic dysmotility. I can't move my bowel. Okay, where are you calling us from? Queens. Okay, well, let's ask Dr. Mahanti to, to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you asked these questions. Um, and this is one of the common problems in, in the world, actually. The diabetes is rising throughout the world. And when, when you get diabetes, um, a lot of people suffer from colonic dysmotility and also, most commonly, as you said, um, gastroparesis. So one thing I want to ask what is you. The, just, and so uh, what is gastroparesis? Gastroparesis means 
when you eat uh, food and food stays in the stomach for a long time and oh. doesn't go down. Makes you feel full. Make you feel mm. full and feel like bloating, mm. gas, feel like distension of the belly. You really feel awful. Yeah. And, um, and that's typically uh, most important aspect of this is to consider controlling diabetes very well. So, and, you know, regularly checking off your sugar and making sure that appropriate diabetic regimen and so also <coughs> continuing exercise and uh, diet control. So best thing to do, perhaps talk to your doctor again and make sure that you have the right regimen and following the recommendation. But I've been taking a lot of venomous every day just to have some bowel movement and I'm not successful and I had to go into the hospital sometimes for a week to get disimpacted. And I'm miserable. I'm just miserable. I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't want to do surgery because I'm in my 60s. It's just an ileostomy. I don't, or, I don't want that. And um, I, I just I, I don't know what to do about it. And I'm, you know, homebound and couchbound because of it. And um, I, how, would you, how do you treat the colonic dysmotility? I'm going to ask him, doctor, to tell you that. Can you... Do you give a simple treatment for the colonic dysmotility? Uh, uh, actually, best thing to do is <coughs> perhaps, I don't know your diet regimen needs to be modified. Clearly, um, clear liquid first and also continuing move, moving and exercising and making sure that your diabetes is still better controlled. That's the most important so part. So that seems to be the key, the key diabetic is, control. The diabetic control. Any pill you suggest for, that you could take now to help? I mean, pill for um, basically diabetic medication. There is no specific pill at this point for uh, colonic dysmotility. More we have gastroparesis Very good. rather than colon. Sally, thanks a lot. Hi, Sandra. Hello. How are you? Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from, I'm in Brooklyn. Which part of Brooklyn? Um, East Flatbush. East Flatbush. How, how are things out in East Flatbush tonight? Oh, quiet at the moment. Quiet, quiet. that's good. Where, you, where do you like to go out to eat in East Flatbush? I don't really eat out. What, you like to cook? I am a, yes. I'm a person who cooks, who does all my cooking. So what, if the four of us were coming by tonight, what would you cook? Um, let me see. I'll probably make you some chapati and some curry and some vegetables and mm. stuff like that. What is that chapati? It's like a, um, what you call a roti. Oh, like a ro Dr. Mahanti knows about this. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, chapati, basically Hindi word, and uh, roti, also Hindi word. And then basically it's a bread, thin bread, oh. a round circle. That's, um, you must have gone to a... Yes, yes. Gone to, um, I think... Um, yeah, like paratas. Yes, yes. paratas is one of the things. But parata, you have uh, more... Um, oil, but there's a... Look, uh, you never know what you're going to learn on this show, right, Sandra? So, Sandra? Yes, sir. What can we do? What, what kind of part of medical issue? Okay, I, I need to um, get some info about bradycardia. Well, I've got the man here for you, okay? Okay. Some yeah. bradycardia information. Okay. What is it? Oh, what just is it? Brady. Yeah. So bradycardia is usually a condition that uh, identifies slow heartbeat. And bradycardia could be, uh, uh, there's, there's a number of things that can cause bradycardia. Um, uh, in fact, sometimes bradycardias are completely normal. Um, uh, and at times, bradycardias are very abnormal that uh, require treatment with a pacemaker. So depending on the type of bradycardia, uh, uh, we will decide which is the best therapy for you. Okay. Um, what if you've had the... Uh, um echo and the stress test and all the rest of it and everything comes back negative mm -hmm. what could be causing this bradycardia that you know and the bradycardia is, is low it's as low as 20 sometimes 29. sure well certainly uh, a heart rate of 29 is concerning and unfortunately i can't tell you exactly uh, uh what's it secondary to what's it due to but uh echo and stress tests are a little bit different tests we look at the uh, uh structure of the heart we don't really look at the uh, conduction, um, conductive system of the heart. And okay. that's actually what's responsible for uh, bradycardia. Right. So we do need to uh, perform uh, a few different tests, such as mm -hmm. Holter monitor, event monitor. And these are little devices that you uh, put on the skin around right. the heart. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. wear them for, um, depending on, on the severity of condition, could be for a day, could be for 30 days, could be even longer. 
So mm-hmm. some people, though, actually that work out a lot may have sl- oh, normal. Oh, absolutely. In no, fact, maybe 50 um, may be normal. In fact, uh, athletes, professional athletes, yeah. um, uh, they have heart rates in their 40s, and that's completely normal. So uh, maybe it's nothing to worry about. Uh, you certainly need to speak to your doctor and look into a uh, few other tests uh, uh, to be performed for that diagnosis. Sandra, I hope that helps a lot. Thanks, and thanks for listening. Maybe one day we'll get over there. Thank you very much. Take care. Good luck. I know we have emails, interesting emails, one from Arkansas and one from Los Angeles tonight. Um, the one from Arkansas was a little bit, it was interesting. It's about, um, I don't have her name up there now, but the woman was having itching all over her body. I was going to go to Dr. Douglas on this one. She, particularly when she sweat, she noticed this itching occur. Not all the time, but she says it itches occasionally. She's from Alex in Conway County, um, Arkansas. So whenever she gets hot from exercising, it starts itching all over the place. And uh, Dr. Douglas, if she came in to see you, what would you? How would you work her up? Well, um, first I would I would wish, actually, that I would actually see the rash that she's talking about because sometimes that gives you the diagnosis right away. It sounds like something called urticaria, which is where you get a wheel and flare, is a kind of an allergic type of, of condition. But it's not the typical allergy where you get actual something that touches the skin and you get an allergy. This is more something like an internal allergy. And um, we often don't find the cause, but we certainly do the workup, you know, a bunch of blood tests, PPD, and a bunch of, of, of tests to see what could be causing this. And we, we, it's usually so quite well treated with an anti-allergic medication, you know, Claritin, which is, you, you well know, Benadryl uh, is another one, uh, but that can cause you to be drowsy. But um, it is usually a chronic condition, and if you use an anti-allergic medication, that can be quite well, can well, be very Dr. helpful. Dr. Mahanty here. Certain GI conditions also, maybe certain malignancies can also Even be hepatitis. worrisome. Even Yes, exactly. the most common cause uh, for itching, um, it, it's not necessarily liver disease, but there's one of the causes, but sometimes psychosocial um, <coughs> implications play a role. Means if what do you mean, anxi- someone's nervous? Somebody anxious, nervous, mm-hmm. um, um, they have a high rate of itching, and you know, people that I see even in my practice. Um, and in addition, what you mentioned earlier, the liver disease, if you have high, if you have jaundice mm-hmm. or yellow skin or yellow eye because of liver disease, they get itching. And, <coughs> excuse me. And so, um, so in that case, you could have itching, but the case mm-hmm. you described earlier, it seems like somebody has just exercised. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, listen, we've got so many, <coughs> don't go anywhere. Sorry. We're going to take a short break, and tonight the number is 718-499-6101. We have emails, we have cardiology, gastroenterology, family medicine. So we'll be right back in 60 seconds. Bye. Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on net. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are gastroenterology, cardiology, and family medicine. We have Dr. Shmuti Mahanti right next to me on my left, then Dr. Igor Mamkin and Dr. Montgomery Douglas. We have Norman waiting patiently. Hi, Norman. Yes. Sorry to keep you waiting. Yes. You kn- yeah. Um, s- how are you doing tonight? All right. You, don't um, s- you sound well, like you're tired, a little bit under the weather. Oh, uh, well, yes. Um, I have a lot of things going on with me, but the main thing is since last May, I have lymphedema, and I got lymphedema from taking tamifoxin for breast cancer. I'm taking a different pill now for to prevent breast cancer from getting stronger. Right. How old are you? How old are you, Norman? Seventy-five. And I also have diabetes neuropathy too. And how did you find the breast cancer? Did you discover it by yourself? <laughs> well, yes, yes. I felt it, and I felt a lump, and they took it last December uh, biopsy, and they saw it was uh, breast cancer uh-huh. on my right breast. Then. I, t- uh, I took a pill, which was Tamifoxin, which started this lymphedema. 
The day I'm um, just about inf- lymphedema is when the arm, is it the arm that's blown up? Yeah, my, yeah, the whole arm is blown up on the left arm, and also my left foot is somewhat swollen, too. I'm going to ask Dr. Douglas, so to, and then we also, I'm going to tell you about a special lymphedema clinic that we have, but uh, Dr. Douglas. So, so, yeah. uh, so did the doctor say that that's, that was a side effect? Require them. That, that, that was a side effect of the medication that you took? Yes. So what, what's happening with that? Well, um, I, I was trying a pump. I, I have, and I also tried ACE bandages. And I tried to use a compression sleeve for my left arm, but I couldn't get it on without somebody's mm-hmm. help at home, which I don't have to, you know, to help me at home. Yes. So I had to go to the pump. Yes. And then I also had to go uh, to ACE bandages to put on. But it's staying the same thing since last May. It's still very swollen. Nothing, I went for rehab even for it, mm-hmm. and nothing is helping. Now, um, I think uh, uh, there they are some... Have you seen a vascular surgeon? Yes, yes. And he gave me Torino for the pump, and also he gave me for the compression sleeve, mm-hmm. and nothing is helping. Yes. I thought maybe they might have surgery to get out the lymph, you know, the, the, the liquid that's in there. They say, no, we don't have no for surgery for that. Uh, you have to try different things, which I tried, uh, whatever, and it's not helping. Right. Well, at this, at this stage, I think that it's one of those things that is, is going to be a chronic condition oh. that you may have to live with because at this point, taking out the lymph, lymphatic system in those areas would not be something I would recommend at your age. I so, I so also, we're going to have to treat it symptomatically then, you know, some of those things, the bandages, keeping it elevated, yeah. things like that. There's, yes. a clinic, there's a clinic at the New York Methodist Hospital, a lymphedema clinic, where I've seen them work wonders. Mm. So why don't you call them up tomorrow, let them evaluate you at least, and see if they can help. I, we've seen people going with markedly swollen extremities, and they come out looking normal. Well, I have a walk I have to go with because I have diabetes neuropathy was very bad too. I was, do you have the phone number please? I'm you gonna have? flash it. I don't have the phone number right now. Just New York Methodist Hospital and, and ask for the lymphedema clinic. New York uh, uh, was Methodist Hospital. Right. Methodist, okay. Yes. Norman, did they have? Did they do any surgery when they discovered the breast cancer? The no, no. For? They uh, just took CAT scans, and the last CAT scan I took a couple of months ago, so it's not there anymore. Okay. I think this may help, right, Dr. Douglas? Yes, it may be a good option. Yes, op- yes, I think the lymphedema clinic. So n- we amazing. hope that helps you, Norman, and uh, get in and see them and give us a follow-up, please. Let's go to John now. Hi, John. Dr. Gardner. How are good you? Evening. How are you? Good. How are you, Dr. Gardner? First of all, Happy New Year to you and the panel. Oh, uh, thank you. And where are you calling us from, John? I'm from Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Ah, uh, and what's, what's happening in Bensonhurst? Anything Be- food-wise? Food-wise, I have the best restaurant for you, and he's a good friend of mine. It, it's called Michael's Restaurant. He's on Nostrand Avenue and Avenue R. The best Italian food in all of Brooklyn. Mm. You mentioned my name, he'll take good care of you. Extra John or Freddie, they're like family to me. John or Freddie? Number one, best Italian food in all of Brooklyn. I know, I've passed there so many. They have a pastry shop across the street? Right across the street. Yeah, that's, a- their, that's their, that's their uh, also. That's it. So what do you suggest? What's the, what are their signature dish? Whatever you ask for, it's number one. I love their baked clams, their fried calamari, the penny vodka. He makes his own homemade sauce. Can I get a Brinzino or a whole fish in there? Absolutely. Whatever you want, he'll make for you. Excellent. I never knew where the Brinzino was 10 years ago. All of a sudden, Brinzino became popular, right? But 30 years ago, who ever heard of it? He's the best, John. And and his pastries are out of this world. So now that you did that, what can we do for you? Okay, doctor, I have this bulging disc in my back and the nerve is touching my left kidney, and the pain is unbearable. Uh. I'm taking Percocets for it. I, I, I'm starting to get addicted to them now because I need them to take away the pain. I do not want to do surgery. What is my other option? Okay. Physical therapy? Have you tried physical therapy? I've done that. It's not helping at all. Not, not helping at all. Okay. What about, what about uh, acupuncture? I didn't do no. I didn't do acupuncture. What what the doctor did for me? She gave me a shot in my left kidney. The pain did go away for about maybe a day or two, but then it came back again. 
and you, you, I assume you are, you're in a reg regular exercise program for this? Yes, absolutely. Um, the pain is so bad, doctor, that it wakes me up in the middle of the night, hmm. and I have to take a uh, Percocet pill. I have no, I have no choice. You know, some, sometimes the pain management specialist could give you an, an injection that could give you a good few months of relief. Um, have you seen any pain management specialists? Yes, I, I'm seeing one right now for my left shoulder. I had, to, I had rotator cuff surgery done, and now I'm going to see him for my shoulder. Yeah, you know, sometimes in the situation of chronic pain like that, and, and at your age, not wanting to do anything major surgery, uh, I think that um, that, would be a, that would be the next step in my view. John, I'm sorry, we've got to run, but then I hope that helps you, and I look forward to um, hearing back from you. Okay, thank you, guys. Th thank you again. Th take You're care. welcome. Let's go to Andre now. Andre? Yeah, hi. How are you tonight? I'm good. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Staten Island. Oh, Europe. good. Our first Staten Island caller of the night. All what right. do you like to eat out there? I would like to uh, ask Dr. Mankin a question, cardiologist. Oh, sure. Dr. Mankin's right here. How are you doing, uh, Andre? Recently, um, I had a blood work done, and... Uh, it seems like uh, my doctor checked my um, lipid profile, my cholesterol, and it seems like I have elevated triglycerides. It's a well-known fact that you should keep your bad cholesterol down and good cholesterol up. What about triglycerides? Uh, how important is to keep your triglycerides good. under control? That's my question. So uh, it's, that's an excellent question, Andre. Um, so um, for many years we thought that uh, triglycerides were... Um, uh, a risk factor for coronary disease. Although we do need to control triglycerides, but it's very important to uh, control, as you mentioned, uh, bad cholesterol. So uh, there are a number of medications that we use to uh, prevent cardiovascular risk. And these include uh, uh, statins. I don't know if you um, ever heard of it, but uh, uh, the, this is sort of a mainstream therapy for uh, controlling uh, bad cholesterol. It lowers bad cholesterol and it raises good cholesterol. Now, triglycerides usually decrease by about 10 to 20 percent with uh, statin therapy, which is pretty good. Uh, now, if that's not enough to bring your triglycerides down, we have other medication that we can uh, employ to sort of achieve our goal. But with, uh, depending on your level of triglycerides, there's certainly, a, besides a cardiovascular disease, there's a risk of pancreatitis and the skin conditions. Um, does that answer the question? Yes. Uh, Andre, thanks. I wonder why it didn't catch on as much. Everybody knows HDL, LDL, but the, if you ask triglycerides, most people don't know it. Right, right. It, it, it's a problem, yeah. Thanks a lot, Andre. We appreciate Thank it. Thanks so much. Okay, right. now I, I, I have to repeat the quiz because I can't believe our audience doesn't know this answer. The question is, why, have the, why is the date of Easter determined by the lunar calendar? It's always determined by the lunar calendar, unlike other holidays. Why is Easter determined by the lunar calendar when it should fall? Okay, so uh, let's get the answer to that. Email number two, I just got to talk about this quick, from Bay Ruse in Los Angeles, California. Wishes also all a happy new year, congratulations on the 16th season, hope all is well. And he was told by another viewer that we may be able to help him concerning his brother. He's been in a coma for at least 20, for about 20 months due to aneurysm and hemorrhage, so he had some kind of a stroke. And he, we're continuously looking for ways to improve his health, but it seems there's no progress. He has a wife and two kids, age 9 and 12, and would love to have him back in his normal state, as well as our mother and the rest of his siblings. In this regard, I'd like to request for any recommendation you can give us concerning my brother. I will appreciate any help you can extend us. So that's a sad, very sad call. I don't know, I'll turn it to the panel. Anybody have any thoughts? Well, I mean, the thing I would say, first of all, is, is um, uh, if he has determined that that he would, he would have wanted to continue in this state, then we have to honor that wish. You know? And uh, so the first question I would have is whether that is something that he had determined. Um, but assuming that he did, then I, I, I think th the thing to do is to provide as much support as possible. You know, we, we, these things are unpredictable. Sometimes people actually do wake up. Other times they don't. And you want to talk to him just as you would talk to somebody that you, you are trying to encourage. You know, uh, he may be hearing, he may be not, maybe not. Um, and, uh, and whatever could be done, continue to do, yeah. is all I would say. But it, it's, it's, um, 
it, it does not sound very promising, uh, and, and yet we, we don't want to give up hope. At the same time, we also want to be realistic. So if you can do all of that at the same time while doing it in a positive way, I, I think that that would be the best thing. Ma'am, can any? Um, yeah, I absolutely agree with you, uh, Douglas. I think um, uh, it's a chronic condition, and I think uh, uh, most importantly is to address uh, um, the desires of the patient of being maintained uh, uh, in the state. But if a uh, um, um, patient expressed uh, uh, his wishes uh, to um, sort of... Um, but I wanna, yeah, one thing that I want to bring out is that we don't know what's going to happen in the state. And it's not for the doctor to play God in this situation but to provide the patient for the comfort and the family for the comfort and hope for the best. Now we'll have other doctors listening to this. If we get any, imp any input um, to Beirut, we'll definitely um, follow up with you. So we will follow up and um, a lot of doctors watch the show. So let's see what kind of calls we get or notes. All right. Thank you. Hi, Mary. Mary, how, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Brooklyn. Oh, have you called before? No, that's my first time. First time calling. caller. Very good, very good. What can we do for you? Well, you got to turn the TV off. You see, the first time okay, callers don't on. know this. Yeah, big. That seven second delay, which we never had until we had one caller, which I can't talk about. Otherwise, I'll get the seven second delay. The thing is, now I'm, I'm looking for my remote and I cannot find it. Oh, that always happens, right? Can you go in another room? <laughs> okay, let me do that. Okay. You never can find that remote, right? When my grandson comes over, I'm still looking no, for it. No, I got it. it. Okay. Okay, tonight is the president's speech at 9 o'clock, after. after okay, I'm, yeah. I'm ready. Okay, we're ready for you, Mary. What's the question? My question is not common at all. I have this problem uh, in my stomach. Oh. Whenever I go to the toilet, yes. I have this, this large amount of stool. Mm -hmm. But now, I'm not a big eater. I eat very little but I will still go a lot and more than two times a day. All right, I want to ask Dr. Mahandi, because this is a frequently asked question. I go once every three days, is that normal? I go twice a day, is that normal? What's normal? Well, no, no, <coughs> no, no me, Mary, my let, let Dr. Is, it's uh, so much even if I don't eat and I'm on the weight. Okay, let's see what Dr. Mahandi says. Uh, actually, normal is uh, well. I mean, uh, vary from one person to individual. So as long as one person having three to four bowel movement per, per a week, that's still considered normal. However, vast majority of people, we would like to do at least once a day. But some cases, you have three to four bowel movement per week, that's still considered normal. normal. The question um, she, she had was, um, <clears throat> She's having large amount of stool, despite she's underweight. As the, if, uh, if oh, I am right, but she's not eating that much. She's underweight, yet all the stool. And the question, uh, number one question I have uh, for her is diet. What kind of diet are you taking? Mary, what are you taking for your diet? You mean what type of food I eat? Yeah, what yes. kind of foods? I eat anything. I eat uh, eggs in the morning. Uh, I eat bread, but I eat very little. What about your lunch and dinner? I'm a rice eater, so I eat rice and chicken. But the thing is, before I used to have stomach ache, and I went to the hospital, I had a colonoscopy, endoscopy, cap scan, and everything was normal inside of my stomach. Mm. Sounds but like I'm Mary's very concerned about the stomach, the bowel movement. She seems to be fixed on this, even yeah. though everything is not negative so maybe we could reassure her uh, i think that it's okay to have a extra amount of stool i don't want you to do uh, think too much a certain sense but at the same time some people could have extra amount of stool and then also clearly varies with the dietary habit that's why i was asking you if you're taking a lot of fibers uh, or, or salad uh, or vegetables that occurs more uh, more stool amount. So that certainly play a role. Um, but at the same time, you have done full workup, so I'm not concerned. So you should be happy that nothing wrong and it's okay to have some extra uh, stool. Mary, thanks so much for the call and give us, give us a follow-up. But, you know, basically the doctor's telling you that it doesn't sound serious, so nothing you have to worry about, maybe more of an annoyance. Hi, Maria. 
Hi, how are you? Oh, it's good to hear from you. Really? You remember me calling before? I, I remember the voice. Marine Park. You're right, I remember. What's out in Marine Park? Did they have? I know that we lost that King's Plaza Diner, huh? Yeah, a long time, I think, I know. already. Anything, any place out there to eat still? Nah, not really. No. Well, All the good, good stuff is gone. You have to go into the city? Yeah, I think so. Where do you like to go in the city when you go to eat? Uh, I haven't gone in a while. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I really don't remember. I, I, I'll tell you a good place, Faro. It's in uh, 7th Avenue and 3rd Street. Greek food, delicious fresh yeah, Greek food. Yeah, Greek food is good. Faro, look that up, Pharaoh. you're going to like that. Yeah, and tell him you saw us the doctor, he's going to give you wine. Uh, okay? <laughs> okay. What can we do for you? Well, I've been using doctors on call coming to the house call. Now he's leaving my doctor. Now they're getting rid of the program in Lutheran Hospital. Oh, the doctor on call program. Right. Okay. I have no place to go, nowhere to, you know, I'd like to check myself in to a good hospital. Because really, my leg is swollen. I broke my ankle. I have a rod and all kinds of uh, stuff in my leg. I can't get a shoe that fits. So he's got a lot of problems. There are still I got doctors. A lot. I can't move from here. There are still That's doctors on call. You can call up. I know the, the Methodist Hospital is a doctors on call association. I would call. Good, up good. I like Methodist. And, and uh, tell them. Um, I don't. This is not a commercial for Methodist, but it's something that, I that is available. I, I would like you to, to um, call them up and ask about the doctors on call program because it sounds I, like you need that. I definitely do. So definitely do. So Maria, do you have it? Do you have the answer to the quiz? Why Easter? Uh, uh, I'll try. This could this could be a whole boost your whole mood. Uh, maybe <laughs> I sound pretty bad, huh? This a oh, brain tease, I need. <laughs> why is Easter determined by the e lunar calendar? Why Easter? Easter. Um. Easter was the. Uh, uh, time's up. Time's oh, up. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, Maria. No, we got to go because we got so many on here. But I'm okay. call, call back next week. All right. Uh, I'm sorry? Got, call back next week and let me know if you got into the Doctors on Call program. Okay, thank you. Take care. We've got a break now. I tell you, we've got commercials to pay and, so, you know, we've got bills here. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to go back to your questions. We'll probably do rapid fire with the topics of gastroenterology, cardiology, and family medicine. And please, I want to see someone answer that quiz. Why is Easter determined by the lunar calendar? Don't go far. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of Met's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on Net. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are gastroenterology, cardiology, and family medicine. And the quiz question is, why does Easter, why is the day of Easter falls determined by the lunar calendar? It's the only holiday, major Catholic holiday, that's determined by the lunar calendar. I'll give you a hint. It's related to another holiday that happens around that time of year. Okay, now we're going to go to Phyllis on line three. Hi, Phyllis. Yeah, I'd like to know how much acetaminophen Tylenol is safe to Wait, 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 wait. Slow down, slow down. I missed it. I missed it. Wait one second. Where are you calling us from? Can you just talk a little lower, I think? Well, let's lower it a little bit. You're oh, calling from yeah. How much acetylmethylenol is it safe to take daily? I've been taking it daily for months for cervical spine pain. Okay. How much, uh, Dr. Mahadi? That's a very good question. This is the biggest problem throughout the world. And so generally somebody has healthy liver up to 4 grams. So if you're getting extra strength Tylenol, which is 500 milligram pill, and we're regular Tylenol, 325 milligram pill. So you can take up to 4 gram maximum but however i still recommend not more than two gram average people because people tend to abuse so how much extra strain tylenol so you can take up to uh, eight extra strain tylenol per day if you have healthy liver if you have an abnormal or unhealthy liver or damaged liver if, if i say then up to two gram the best way means four extra strain tylenol <coughs> okay i hope that helps you i've been taking it for months is that okay that's it. As long as your liver working fine, if you're taking up to 
eight pills per day generally will be fine. I'm taking arthritis strength. I'm yeah, taking okay. arthritis strength. It's probably extra strength. It's, it's extra strength. How much is that, Doctor? Still 500 milligrams. Oh. Okay, so the, the verdict is on her arthritis strength, what's the maximum number of pills? But she can take up to eight. Eight pills a day, Phyllis. Okay, thank you. Take care. We're going to do rapid fire now. We don't know what's coming in. Dr. Mamkin's going to take the first question, and we're going to go around the, the <coughs> room. So we're going now to Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Hello. Hello. How you doing? How are you doing? Uh, we're, we're waiting for that good question of yours. Okay, um, I'm calling from Brooklyn, New York. Excellent. And um, years ago, I went to St. Mary's Hospital, which is closed down now. Yes. With what, I'm sorry? Those, she went to St. Mary's. They, yes, and they diagnosed me with colitis. Colitis, wow. Now, over I've been to Brooklyn Hospital over 100 times. They don't, now they don't know what to diagnose me with. And the symptoms is severe. Where it's like the bowel movement that comes from me, you can fill up a pale weight. Mm -hmm. The pain is so painful, mm -hmm. but nobody can find out what's wrong with me. They go about what I told them with St. Mary's. I'm getting the same thing every time I go to um, Brooklyn Hospital. I just got out the hospital again Monday. The symptoms is unbelievable. I'm on the floor. I have been in the street where I fell out right uh, there. Okay, so Crystal, because I, I want to get to everyone on the line, what are we going to do about this? So uh, I guess the question is here, so-called colitis, that has to be diagnosis, has to be confirmed. So that we have a colitis means inflammation of the colon. If That's you have inflammation what they injury. Uh, but and they're so, not giving me nothing for it. Well, so first of all, they have diagnosed by colonoscopy and uh, looked and uh, did the biopsy confirm is a colitis? Yes, that's what they gave me. Yes, they put me to sleep for the biopsy, and but the, col um, the colostomy, they kept me woke on. And did they say what the, what the exact colitis? There are several kinds of colitis. Did they say Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or infectious colitis? Did they say specifically? Oh, I don't know which You colitis. know what you got to do, Crystal? You got to get that information. And, and go to a gastroenterologist who can go over this thing and discuss with you. That's probably the best way to do at this point. If you need but to. But I'm not, everybody's giving me, I'm going to see a specialist Friday, but they keep, keep dying, telling me that, like, they don't really see nothing there. They're just going about what I told them. Crystal, this is what we're going to do for you because we're moving ahead. I want you to call Dr. Mahanty. Uh, Dr. Forget it. Okay, Dr. Mahanty. And he's, maybe you could get a referral. Sure, absolutely. Okay. So we're going to get your referral and try and straighten this issue out for you, okay? Thank you so much. Okay, be well. Take care. Hi, Lily. Yes. Where are you calling us from? I'm in Manhattan. Oh, which part of Manhattan? Uh, on the east side. East, Upper east side? Upper east side. Very nice. How are things up there tonight? Good? Oh, it's just congested. They're building the subway. On right, the that Trotter. Street. I go to Trotter yeah. restaurant there, and it's, they're building the subway. It's terrible. It is. It's a wreck. It looks like a war zone. It does. But it'll be great in another couple of years, I hope. But anyway, Lily, I'd love to talk, but my producer's gone like this, like this, so we need to get a question okay, in. Okay, I'll get right there. I have a young granddaughter. She's 18. And um, we took her to a few doctors, and they said that she has underdeveloped ovaries. Okay. Uh, she cannot even know. Uh, it's hard for her to have sexual relationships, and it's hard for her. Um, she doesn't even have a period. She's never mm -hmm. had a period, and her breast is underdeveloped. So the uh, doctors did tell us we took her to a gynecologist. We mm -hmm. also took her to an um, endocrinologist, and they gave her uh, estrogen. And they said that she would have to wear estrogen Lily, let me, just, let me just say, because th this is our rapid fire, and I can't do it justice in 30 seconds. What I need you to do is call back after the show, and we'll get you a, a referral to somebody who can evaluate the ovaries and see what's going on, because there are many different possibilities, and the treatment is varied. So could you do me that favor and just call back he, right after the show? I certainly will. Okay, I we'll will. talk to you then. I got a Charles. Hi, Charles. Hey. How you doing tonight? Okay, pretty good. Good. I'm sorry to rush you, but what's the question? Well, the question is, like, uh, you know, my, uh, my my wife, she has a back pain, and uh, when she gets up, it, it's, it's like uh, it really bothers her. Then she got to walk off the pain, and we have no reason why it occurred. 
And also myself, I have uh, my, my knees. Uh, it's like when the weather's good, uh, my knees don't bother me. But when, as soon as the weather gets started getting raining and everything, uh, it's getting real, you know, it really pains me a lot. Okay, and, so we got a couple of arthritis questions, back pain. I'm gonna, since we're in the rapid fire, I'm going to turn to Dr. Mamkin. So, although arthritis is not my specialty, but um, it's a chronic disease, um, and I think uh, uh, there are a number of uh, medications available uh, to treat it, and these include um, oral pills, uh, such as anti-inflammatory, analgesics, or there are, uh, as far as I know, there are injections that you can inject in the joints and to uh, sort of like uh, to um, give more uh, loop to the joint, uh, and that helps with the symptoms. So that should help. Uh, we had to move on to the next question. Sure. But I hope that helps you. And uh, Charles, give, you, give us a call back next week with, towards the beginning of the show because we're going to go to Jane, who I think has the answer to the quiz. Hi, Jane. Hi, how are you? Hi, Jane. So did the hints get help you out at all for the quiz? I think it has to do with um, the Orthodox and the non orthodox calendar near Passover. W can you be more specific? Well, it, 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 has, it has to do with that calendar. Because there's the orthodox calendar, non-orthodox calendar. Oh, you know, i got to ask the judges on that one. Let me just ask, what do you think of that judge, is that answer? I'm not sure what the answer is, but what do you think of it? <laughs> oh, okay. I was trying to be kinder than the buzzer, but... Um, I am going to say, you, because of the special spoon that we have. You're so close. You're so close. Just Plus Vanessa cigar. But what we may have to do is turn the question over to next week, and, and we'll continue it next week. Okay. All right. I, do you have a question? Yeah, I wanted to ask you real. Um, you know, I had breast. Cancer, I had surgery, right? Yes. And my um, left now that I had surgery on is like swelling up. I oh. went to the doctor and I had. Okay, we're going to tell you again. We have another lymphedema question of surgery after breast cancer and blowing up. Yes, your um, your um, the there was. We, we're not hearing all of the question because there's a little bit of um, interference. But anyway, um, so you're saying that you had mastectomy and there is a lot of um, swelling. And this is very common after that kind of procedure. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but we, we've come to the end of the show. And um, I don't know what to do. There's so many good calls, and we wish we could have done more. Those who got through at the end, please call back so we can give better answers, longer answers. But that's it for this episode of Ask the Doctor. I've got to thank Dr. Shmuti Mohanty, Dr. Igor Mankin, and Dr. Montgomery Douglas for coming in. And we hope we're able to help you. It's good to remember that you should always be proactive about your own health. Speak to doctors about your concerns. Go for second or even third opinions. Visit our website at netny.net slash askthedoctor. Here you can read the, my tablet column, watch past episodes. Well, I want to thank Dr. Linda Lapatosa, our quiz master, and I want to thank all of you for your questions. Now tonight, very important, tune in at 10 o'clock for a special encore presentation of last week's show. Now next week we're going to discuss urology, breast disease, and internal and geriatric medicine. And remember the quiz for next week. Why is Easter scheduled by the lunar calendar? Goodbye, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the tablet.